since I last saw you when you came in for the um, conference. Of course, uh, that conference uh, saw you as a member to see how the review of the constitution of this uh, land can yeah, be yes. rejigged. And sure. um, it was a wonderful outing since that time that I saw you. That I, Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome to yeah. the studios of Pause the 102.5 FM. Now, two years on, as a senator representing the Southern Senatorial Districts of Ado State, I would like you to talk about um, your experience at the National Assembly. Yes. What is it like for you? That's a very good one. On the 12th of June, uh, 2019, we had the opportunity of becoming Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I spent two years now, and the two years have been very challenging because after three months as a Senator, I had an accident, so I'm, I'm lucky to be alive. Mm. But the beauty of it is that I've not wasted time. I've sponsored many bills. I've sponsored about eight, I've sponsored about eight bills, mm. and I've sponsored over 10, um, 10 over 10 motions and what i've discovered is that when you are in the senate it's not only about the law it's, it's beyond the law you have to look after your constituency and it's very very unfortunate that on those south i will describe on those out as not part of nigeria why would you say yeah, that because on those south has not benefited anything from Nigeria that is very, very significant. If you look at our budget, our budget this year is 12 trillion. And we have 109 senatorial districts. So if you are, if you are going to divide 12 trillion into 109, that means that each senatorial district you have, you have access to 11 billion in a year, for at least for 20, 21. But by the time you put it together, and you look at the budget, what on those out will benefit cannot even be up to 2 billion, which is a very big shortage. In my senatorial district, we have the longest seashore, the longest seashore, that is 180 kilometers. 180 kilometers in Nigeria is long enough. There is no federal government presence in that region, and it's very, very unfortunate. And if I have an opportunity, because I still have two more years, as soon as I go back now, I'm going to, I'm going to sponsor a bill that federal government should put a naval base in that region, so that, in case, so that our security can be very, very meaningful. Because invad, in, invaders can come in through on those south and invade Nigeria because there is no security there at all. The place is open. When you look at higher institutions, higher institutions in Ondo South, we have one and a half. We have the university and a polytechnic. <laughs> yes. That makes it one and a half. Yes, it makes it one and a half. But some people don't tell you those are two institutions. Yeah, but if you look at if you look at Kaduna, Kaduna Metropolis, Kaduna, they have fifty seven higher institutions. Hmm. You see that the gap is enormous. There is no single federal government industry in Ondo South. And these are the things. So, like I said, two years on, so, so what is now, the experience like? Yes, Some people will say two years on, yeah, two apart years, from sponsoring those bills yeah, and motions, yeah, what are you doing? Good. What have, for instance, now, we have electricity problem in four local governments. I've been talking about it. I've, my voice is very clear on it. And... The, the federal government has pushed electricity to NDDC. NDDC, they've tried, we've, uh, we've been on it, they've, they've built a power station in uh, Erinje, and that power station should be taken off very, very soon. Then there are some local governments that have installed solar street lights, have installed solar street lights in Lerugi Okegbo local government, in Odigbo, in Okitupa, in Rile. Before the end of the year, I'm going to move out, move down to Irile and Eseodo. We've been able to build schools in Ileruji um, Okibu local government and, and, and in Odibo local government. This year now, we are moving to Irile and, um, and um, Okitipupa, and we are moving it on like that. If you, for instance, have been able to push for the establishment of, of a of, a bit, of bitumen 
in Odeaye. The beauty of it is that the people from Odeaye, they are nice people. They are so enthusiastic that something like this will come. Under, underground, we have 120 miles, 20 miles of bitumen rotting away. In some parts of Odeaye, you see bitumen coming out live. And I've been making noise on this, that we need a bitumen institute there. And with that bitumen institute, it will take care of past trials. Because in the past head of states, they be making move that we should have a bitumen. When they try it for some time, they dump it. When they try it for some time, they dump it. But with a bitumen institute, when it takes place, it will service all these ideas here and there. Nigeria has the second largest deposit of bitumen in the whole world. And nothing has been done. And it's in my friend, it's in my senatorial district. So we are making we are making a big cry that we need a bitumen institute there. If you look at uh, there's a place called Arara Mus Ara Music Front. Arara Music Front has a deep sea. It has a deep sea. That place can can accommodate a deep sea oh. seaport. And if you look at Lagos, we have we have Tinkan Island, we have Apapa, we, those two ports. Those two ports cannot service Nigeria because in the whole country, we only have six, six seaports taking care of 200 million people. It's a disgrace. In South Africa, they have 96 seaports. And in Nigeria, we, have, we only have six. So it's, it has put pressure on me that there must be a seaport in Ondo South. And that seaport we create jobs for people around there and that seaport will service Ondo State, Ekiti State, um, Kogi State, Edo State and and um, and Oshun State. And it will decongest Lagos. So Ondo South is blessed with facilities. It's just for the federal government to assist us and put things there here and there. For instance, if you look at if you look at the riverine areas. The river areas have been encroached with bad weather here and there, and have, I'm advocating for a, a, a federal medical center in 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 Irele. That federal medical center will save our face than having problem in Ilaje and they be running to a war. Before they get to a war, they will die. So we, we definitely need a medical center there to take to take care of people. And if you look at the riverine areas, they are using rotting boats. They are they are capsizing here and there. So I'm soliciting through my bill. I'm soliciting for a for a, a for a naval architecture whereby they'll be able to build meaningful boats so that it will reduce accidents and it will be meaningful to the people around there. And these are the things I'm trying to put in place. If you look at if you look at Aromiobu, when you get to Aromiobu, you see that Aromiobu, they have rubber everywhere. They have palm oil everywhere. The, the palm oil at Ayeson was established in 1953 by Chief Obafemi that bit That plant serviced Malaysia. Malaysia came to, came to Ayeson. They took some seeds from Ayeson in 1953. Now Malaysia is the largest producer of oil palm in the whole world, and we have no position. If you get to Ayeson, you see you see palm trees that have been planted over forty years. But and I, what are we doing? This that is senator, that is why I'm crying. The that senator, we, we need I, help in Ondo South. I was just going to ask you. Yes, you've been you've been able to highlight all this point, and you said like you using your words, you're yes. crying out. Yes. Do you think your voice is loud enough, or is it because um you are not in the ruling party? Yes, being in the ruling party doesn't mean anything. I, I cannot be in the ruling party. Is your party. voice loud enough? It, it's loud enough. Because I've sponsored some of these bills. We've got, now we are waiting for public inquiry. And in the public inquiry, our people will come from Undo South and make their voice to be heard. To be heard. Because the, the, the cry is that sort Undo State, sort, sort Undo South out so that we won't be crying that we are not part of Nigeria. Because if you are if you are putting facilities in the north, if you are putting facilities in the middle belt, and you know those are there's nothing there, then it's very very embarrassing. How have you been able to take care of the sea incursion that they are experiencing? Yes, the sea incursion when it happened, I I sponsored a bill 
in November so that Ayetoro can be resuscitated. But they never listened to me. Then I want to thank channels. Channels Television was always showing the incursion in Ondo South. Then we uh, also talked about it. Yes, uh, yes, everybody tried. Then I raised another bill, that another motion. That motion was very, very powerful because I indicted federal government that federal government, this is your responsibility. Talk to Ondo State, talk to NDDC, talk to this oil company so that they can put things together and go and sort it out. Unfortunately, the next day they swung into action and things are going on there. But what Ondo South need is not just intervention. We need to have things on ground. If you look at look at Coco, Coco Coco is is very conversant, is very meaningful in Ileoluji, Idore, Ore, Udigo, and all these places. We need a Coco board because when we have already sponsored a bill on Coco board, when we have a Coco board, the board will be buying this Coco regularly, conserving it, and helping the farmers and sell abroad. And we, if we have a seaport, we don't have to take those cocoa to Lagos. We just take it straight to Arabi. And that seaport will open a lot of opportunities. Because look at Irele. Irele. Plantain can grow anywhere in Irele. If we have a plantain plantation in Irele, a plantain plantation, they, they will be transporting but plantain every day abroad. That, but Bahamas only rely on, plant, on banana. Bahamas. So in Irele, if you if you package plantain and we export it, it will create jobs for people. Look at what is happening now about all this cow going here and there. Anti apple grazing. Yes, anti apple grazing. On the on those out is ready because we have we have a Greek settlement that have been established many years back that have been abandoned. Go, federal government can can cooperate with state government and let us redevelop all these all these are Greek set agri settlement so that things can operate. And with agri settlement, the cows we are putting there will be producing milk. At, in England, you will never see a cow moving around. No. In America, America America has over ninety four million cows. Mm. And you will never see any cow at the airport. Interesting. This new yes, I really you. appreciate you for um, highlighting all this point. Now let's talk about politics. Yeah. What's happening? PDP is a search for the next uh, national chairman. Yes. And just this morning we heard that uh, you people are considering um, David Mark, Senator David Mark. You and know, the search you, is still you, ongoing. No, you know, let me tell you one thing. In, in a political setting, people carry this rumor here and there. Nobody is c considering David Mark. No, nobody. Okay. But they are talking about making him the chairman of BOT. BOT. Yeah. Okay, BOT. If you are, if you want to be the chairman of BOT, it doesn't automatically turn you to be the national chairman, the, the anyway. national chairman or the yeah, president. Yeah. But this is, you know, we are we are we are we are at half time. Hmm. And when you are at half time, because the election is twenty twenty three, but when you are halfway, people will be surging here and there and so on. So what is happening in PDP now is normal. By the internal run Yes, it, it, because people want to show their face here and there. By January, you start seeing a lot of things happening. People will be coming from APC, they'll be joining PDP. Because everybody, pe people have tested APC and they know that that's, APC... That's the ruling party. Yes, the, the ruling party, because mm. the ruling party has not done well. If you look at our currency, our currency is falling at a geometric project, projection every day. And he said, and that is why things are very expensive. If you go to the market at eight o'clock to buy pepper for ten naira, by the time you go back at two o'clock, they will tell you that it's twenty naira. That is the type of government we have now. And APC has the problem with leadership, and the leadership is affecting the whole country. So in 2023, people will see a different change about Nigeria. But it's uh, so, it some, some people, agnostic. some people will want to say the PDP was on the saddle for sixteen years. Yes, when PDP was there. If you look at the condition presently, if you look at the condition pre presently, and you look at what happened when the PDP was managing Nigeria, the difference is clear, because because when the president when when PDP was in power, um, what is it called? When PDP was in power, life was not as bad as this. Mm. The exchange rate, the exchange rate, as of today is seven hundred and twenty seven hundred and forty naira to one pound. pound. 
I, I know when, you're, when, you're conversing with pounds. Yes, yes. In the if, UK. If, yes, even even the naira, the naira as of today is five hundred and forty-seven to dollar. To dollar is is killing. Okay, now, during PDP era, it wasn't like that. Even petrol, petrol, yeah, fuel was not as expensive as it is today. Things things have gone bad. Distinguished yes. senator, you said something about half time. Yes. So let's look at half time in Undo South Senatorial District. Yes. We saw a recent um, petition to the IG, a paper that was written by someone your statement referred to as a baby lawyer. Yes, yes. Would that are alleged that um, you are injury trials. Could that be politics again? Yeah, yeah number one. Is it, politics going one. that way no, of um, no, doing the, fetish no, things no, and no, all of that? No, let me tell you one thing. Number one is not a member of our party. When he was a member of our party, I appointed him as a as a special advisor on legal matters. And I was paying him 75,000 naira every month. I paid him I paid him for 10 months. Oh, he was one of your aides? He was one of my aides. And at a point in time, when when I said, I've done enough there, let me move on to other things, he came with a formula that, that he borrowed money during my election. How can you borrow more money during my election? When you borrow the money, did you... The Duke, the Duke come to me to say, this is the money I've borrowed. And I had a powerful election committee. The secretary of the committee is my SLA today, and it's a living witness. You said you borrowed money. I was not part of the arrangement. You didn't show me any money. You said you, you had to go and put down your car. And when we were giving money to all these local governments, we were giving money, and you were taking money from us. So he said I should go and help him to pay the debt he's owed. I said, that is not me. Then the only option he has is just to blackmail. But very soon we are going to meet in the law court because definitely he is he's just a nuisance. Because you've earned you you've earned seven hundred and fifty thousand from me for ten months. For ten months. Yeah, for ten months. And all of a sudden you came back that you are owing. When I was giving you that money, why didn't you tell me that please I I went to borrow money from so 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 I would have said it's okay if you have got to borrow money, which is your own outcome, I can be helping you to pay fifty thousand after that loan and be giving you 25,000, so at least you'll be servicing your debt. Your, your statement also mentioned that yeah. former friends who are now detractors, it does that mean that um, this aid of yours had another team of people that no, were in your party before no, they left? No, 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 no. What happened is that, you know, um, during the governorship election, some people decided to leave the party to join another party. Mm. And when you are in a political party, it's, it's, uh, it's to your own discretion to stay where you are. They were not comfortable with PDP then, then they led for another party. And now some of them are coming back. You cannot put gloves, you cannot put chain on their head, you cannot put chain on their head, you cannot put chain on their head to stay in your party. Mm. If they are not happy with the, with the arrangement, yeah. then they left, and now they are back. Coming back is not a crime. When you come back, we welcome you back. Interesting. That's, that's the position. Interesting. My dear listener, I've been chatting with Distinguished Senator Nicholas Tofoma of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, representing Ondo South Senatorial District uh, on the platform of the PDP in the Ninth National Assembly. Now, I want to quickly ask you, like you said, it's half time. Yes, it's half time. What's the next move, Distinguished Senator? Yes, the, the next move is to make sure that all facilities are extended to other parts and is to fight the electricity. Before I leave the second half, Electricity will be in all the six local governments. Interesting. It's a priority. Affirmative. Yes. It's you a, have been it, affirmative yeah, about it. It's a, prior, it's a priority because the installations are already put in there. It's just to put one or two things together and bring the light. That's going to be a good news because yeah, for it, over a decade. Yes. It, even be, it, it's an embarrassment. As soon as I get to the, as soon as I resume for the second half, my first, my first um, motion is going to be on the electricity. Then on uh, on putting a security device along that seashore. I will have a motion on it. The areas that have not put electricity, electricity, uh, uh, I mean, have, have not put solar, solar will be put in the Laje Seodo. Areas that I need to, to assist in building schools, I will be able to service it. And I know I will do better in the second half than the first half. Because the first half, I had an accident, and that, that accident has been so terrible. Up mm. to now, I'm still, on, I'm still on crutches. Mm. But... But I'm settling down gradually.
Thank so God. that is the position. We thank God for your life, of course, from that accident, and uh, you're still here kicking as a distinguished senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank now, you. Now, you just told us about the next move that you're here to fire your drive in the second half. Yes. Now, I want to, to tell us about your political ideology, because we've seen cases where politicians, you know, when the tickets are not given to them in future or something, they, they run move away, to they the other side. Yes, let, What's let, your political ideology? Yeah, my, like? my, my political ideology is very clear. You know, I spent 26 years in England, and I saw how things are done. Unfortunately, we are opposite in Nigeria. My ideology is that let us look after our people. Let us look after our people. Let us put industries in places. Let us create jobs. When you create jobs, you are not only building people you are even building the country that is why i said you know those south have not seen it as part of nigeria because there is no single industry there for instance look at glass industry that used to be in Oluwa glass. Oluwa glass. federal government can redrive Oluwa glass when they redrive when they drive they redrive Oluwa glass Oluwa glass will create just one nothing less than ten thousand people because they make it bigger let us explore our bitumen. When we explore our bitumen, we will create jobs. We will, we will create jobs. This school of maritime and naval architecture that I'm proposing for SLO, if it comes to place, people will have jobs, there will be safety, everybody will be happy. For instance, I have a, I have a bill for Ileoluji in the Federal School, of, Federal School of Basic Studies. That basic studies, because I've benefited from basic studies in the past, our people, after school certificate, when you fail your exams, you become a dropout. Mm. That school of basic studies is to bring all the dropouts together and let them have an op another opportunity for one year. That one year, they will have been able to retake their exams and some universities will be able to build into that school of basic studies and they can move on with their education so that we will not be grouping um, dropouts. Mm. So those are the things I'm trying to put in place. Let Every, let everybody benefit from what we have. We are, Nigeria is proposing 12 billion as a budget. Let it go equally to all these senatorial districts. That's why I claim that how can Kaduna have, Kaduna alone have 57 higher institutions and the whole loan, those out have one and a half. It's so bad. <laughs> so my, my ideology is that everybody must be taken good care of. And another thing is this, leadership, which is our problem in this country. When you are a leader, you must have a team. You must have a team that will help you on electricity, that will help you on road construction, that will help you on health, and so on. But the leadership we have now, they are just thinking about themselves. I told someone a few months ago, I said, if I have opportunity in future to, to have a role to play, everybody will have a medical doctor. And it's, it's achievable. Because look at on those state. You know, in those states, we have 203 wards. Have 203 medical doctors. If you are from that ward, go and register. The doctor will be able to look after you, take your temperature, do whatever it needs to do. Then if you, if you have... Some people have BP, they don't know. Some people have high blood pressure, they don't know. The doctor will look at you, will take care of you, and give you a letter, you take it to the general hospital. Are you replicating that now in on those house? I, I can't replicate it in on those house because, number one, I don't have a budget to do that because because in on those out we have we have about 66 wards in 66 wards where will i get money to buy vehicle for 66 doctors where will i get money to be paying the doctors it's not achievable but these are part of my dream because you ask me what is my what is my next uh, move my, my next move so these are the things i'm looking out to that and i believe god we redirect this country so that they can have meaningful leaders that can move this country forward. All right, thank mm -hmm. you very much. I've been talking to Distinguished Senator Nicholas Tofuomo. Now, on a lighter note, yes, you appear to be a workaholic, despite the fact that you had that accident. We well, thank God for saving your life, but you still, you're still working. How yeah. do you relax? Yes, you know. For instance, it's Friday. I love the way you're dressed. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're dressed in a very simple way. Yes, like, okay, you, know, you want to play? I, I, go, I, I, you want to go play golf or I, something? I, 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 How do you relax? I, I have no choice. My father was a judge, and he he retired statutorily. My mother is a shrewd businesswoman, and 
My mother is 91. She still sells clothes. When you meet her, so my mother is very active. My father was very active. So I have no choice. I must be active. So that the flag must be flying at all times. Mm. You know, let me tell you one thing. I want to seize this opportunity to thank Dr. Mimiko. When I was Dr. Mimiko's commissioner, I was his commissioner for six years. He gave me opportunity to perform. If you look at that was when he brought these shuttle buses. The shuttle buses, we had 90 buses. And when I was leaving, I left the 90 buses. In good and, shape. In good shape. And for people, and we were looking after children. None of my family benefited from this school fee shuttle. But my dream was to make sure that people are happy. When you're working hard and people are happy around you, that is good enough. Now, thank you. Thank God you just mentioned that particular um, time of years when you served. Yes. And um, I want to take you now to the national level. Yes. On the state of the nation. Yes. We've talked about um, the anti open grazing law, which is a bill, I mean, a bill rather. Yes. It's going to be a law in future. Yes. And uh, we, we are hoping to hear from you people Definitely. at the National Assembly. By God's grace. Now, but the understood governor already passed that into law and um, he signed it. So, how would you react to this? I've, I've reacted. I congratulated him. Immediately. Immediately. I, I think I saw that. Right yes, on. because number one, when you are doing well, either you are in party A, you are in APC, you are in any party, if you are doing well, it's my responsibility as a senator to, to commend you. He has taken the rightful decision, and I'm, I'm with him. For instance, but there is a move, which, but it's not just the anti open grazing law, we should take a step further. We just take a step for that. We, we we don't expect these cows to be kept in their bedroom. Mm. No, let us talk. Let the states, the southern, the southern states, and federal government sit down. Let us establish cattle farms. If we establish cattle farms, the cattle will be in the farm. The cattle will be producing milk for people to consume. When I was in England, when um. They call it dairies. Yeah. Milk was given to people free of charge. We have the op we have the opportunity. We can seize, we can take advantage of it. Let us have cattle farm. It will create employment. Some people will be going to be bringing food there. They will buy the food from them. They will the some people will look after the cattle there, and and we will sell from there, and we can even take abroad from there. Let us do it well. So I think the governor has taken. A rightful decision, and I support his decision. And he should take a step forward. And he should take a step forward. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, as a matter of fact, the anti opal grazing bill, yeah. the way the petroleum industry bill lied on the table of the National Assembly for years before it became an act, eventually, kudos to you people at the National Assembly that now we now have the PIA, won't all this motions and bills to come? take that long no it, 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 it won't take long the, the southern like you the, said the, it's the, half time it's half time look at the southern west the south the southern governors they've all taken a position that they are anti open grazing uh, they, they support the anti open grazing bill all the southern governors that's about 17 or 18 of them they've taken a stand so that will grant you speed at the national assembly yes and all the all the southern senators have comprehended that decision so we are we are on the same page and the issue is this, even in the middle belt, the middle belt senators can now see...